Hey, hi, Garbage Squad. Foxy here with a new video. In this video, we'll be talking about 2A Rauk and how he performs in the new Kairos dungeons. As you can see, I have two of them. I invested 100 additional Dimensional Health Energy, and I don't regret doing so because it has helped my new teams so much. Before we get into the video, though, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And if you do have Twitch Prime, I appreciate if you go to the description below, go to my Twitch channel, drop a Twitch Prime and support the channel even further. If not, it's all good. Appreciate you watching anyways. Anyways, uh, I say that anyways a lot, don't I? Anyways, we are going to showcase what I mean by 2A route is so good. So, this is my team on Steel Fortress B10. It's a little different than the other team. And after some testing, this team... I can almost confidently say it's 100%. When I say almost, it's because I've farmed for one whole day and I never failed. It averages roughly between a minute 10 to sometimes if it's bad, bad RNG, I've seen a two minute run before. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But first of all, if you guys want to see this in action, just skip ahead a little bit further because right now we'll be talking about substitutions. Um, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, okay, I don't have two 2A routes. What about a crow? I've tested one route and one crow, and I found it fails. And I think the reason why it fails is because crow is a dark unit, and this dungeon is wind, so crow can die. But also the main reason is because of these two routes have this team up skill. If you can team up more often, we have the ability to use Zinc's third skill more often. So that is the reason why I think this team is safe because I have so many turn cycling abilities to ensure I always or almost always get heap of ashes at the boss stage. So in terms of turn order, number one is Zinc. So Zinc goes first. You do not need this much accuracy. The accuracy check Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure is 24%. That 24% comes from the description below in the Reddit thread because in that thread, the information was data mined and that's how much accuracy you need. So if I were to rebuild this, with, if it's FRR, it'd be speed, crit damage, defense to do a little bit more damage. If you can't build it a damage build, I would build it a support build because you just need it to live and use third skill with high accuracy. And when I say 24%, that is referring to the last boss. The mid boss of the stage requires you to have 39% accuracy. So should you want to land defense break on this skill, I would highly suggest you run around the 39% rate if possible. If not, 24 is okay too. The next monster that goes is the Lorne. So the Lorne goes after the Zinc because the Zinc should use third skill to block it and then Lorne defense breaks. This doesn't make too much sense for Lauren to go first to have him put the buffs up and then you block it when it's already up and then your route goes and does no damage. It makes no sense. However, when we talk about substitutions, if you had a Gina, which I do have, except for some of you guys, you may not have the luxury of summoning this or you awakened it. You cannot awaken this because if it's not awakened, it has this skill here, Toad Poison, that will always be used if there is a buff. So should you use this variation, which I haven't tested, but should work the same way. Lauren goes first to give the boss the buffs. If the boss gets the buffs, Gina has smart AI, uses the second skill and boom. So that is the reason why um, Gina is also a replacement here. And then you're probably wondering with a Fran. The Fran goes before the Rauks, the damage dealers. Honestly, the Fran is only rocking two great endure runes and then it's on a bond set. So the reason why you saw that Fran have a really high resistance is because sometimes you bomb proc out of your immunity or sometimes you can't bomb proc into having an immunity. As you just saw, Fran got stunned. And if you have high resistance and it stops the stun or a debuff on your Fran, you have the ability to keep your cycling and having turns and getting your cooldowns back. And by having bond runes or, just, or ensuring you have turns on your Fran, it keeps your team a lot more safe. If you have more heals, have more immunity, more attack buff, 
your team is going to be a little bit more safe and more consistent. So that's the reason why I put a higher res build on her with the Endure set and some Endure runes on her. I don't believe she really needs to be that fast. Otherwise, if she's super fast, like 160 will set or fine will set, you would have to bump everything up. So if you just have like a extra Fran laying around or if you don't, then you put your Zinc on Swift to speed tune it and everything like that. But as you can see from this run, it is going pretty well because Zinc does third skill, Lauren does first skill, and then we have the Rauks to turn cycle and do a lot of damage. So you just saw Zinc do heap of ashes again. So if you cannot kill in one rotation, all those team ups gives you the ability to use heap of ashes multiple times. Same can be said if you had a Gina in this situation, that Gina can keep cycling and cycling and cycling. I'm including some sped up clips of my runs here so you have an idea of how the team runs in terms of just different situations. I know it's sped up here, but hopefully it helps. You can definitely see that the Rauks don't have as much damage as a Crow, but it's a lot safer at the boss with all the turn cycling we get. Like I said, I don't have a Gina built yet, but I would assume it runs very smoothly like this. So for this part of the video, we'll be talking about Punisher's Crit B10. You will see a Yaku here, and we'll talk about him later. But essentially, this team is my most consistent team for fast and safe runs. Uh, so 2A Rauk, having two of them in Punisher's Crypt B10 is actually viable. However, you need a very specific team for it to work. And that specific monster is the... A fire homunculus so the fire homunculus would replace the yen here and the reason why the fire homunculus works so well is because on turn one or skill one rather it gives you dots so by having the ability to team up with the fire homunculus and turn cycle so many times with the verd it gives you the ability to land dots dots are the most easy way and consistent way to land damage and kill the boss i after testing, having pure damage with like a Yen or a Pang or an Orochi wasn't as good as having consistent dots through having Rauk and Vertihal. And I'll show it to you with this team what I mean here. But I did test, let's say I, let's say I replaced the Yaku with the Rauk here and the only daughters I have are Jolten and Yen. But I also tried replacing the Verd and putting a Rauk and having the Yaku with Yen leader skill and it didn't work out that much. Um, one reason is because Vertihal gives you so many turn cycling so it works very well and by having the route there replacing the Yaku didn't work out too well missing the dots. R Rauk replacing the Yen didn't have too many dots here. So in terms of like turn cycling I think pe Pang would definitely be good uh, but I think Yen is better if you have better room quality here. So after this run, I do want to showcase you about the turn order of this team. I'm not going to talk about 2A Rauk and the homunculus version because I'm using my homunculus for something else at the moment and I can't showcase to you right now. I'm kind of in the middle of a project with that, but I've seen people use that team and it works really well just because of the dots are super fat and huge. So in this team, the turn order of this team is Yen first, followed by the Joltan, into the Yaku, into the Rauk. Uh, so you'll see right now, obviously, Verd goes last to give you more turns. And I'll explain to you, all of you guys have been thinking, why are you not putting Joltan first to land defense break and yada yada? And there's a really good reason for that. And it has to do with the speed of your monsters, but also how the boss um, is pretty, it's pretty powerful and it's pretty speedy. So if you don't have super fast runes, you might struggle here. So I'm going to use all my cooldowns here to assume for the next part I have what I need here just for the purpose of this video. Obviously, it won't be that for all the time. So here, Yen specifically, this skill takes attack bar. If it takes attack bar, it gives the boss an immediate turn. Keep that in mind. So we are going to use turn one, boom, and you see the boss take a turn. So when the boss takes a turn, Yen goes first because if she second skills, she lands a bunch of dots. After she lands a bunch of dots, he takes a turn. Or rather, the attack bar reduction on skill two on Yen gives him a turn, but if you skill one, he doesn't take a turn anyway. So it doesn't really matter, that's why Yen goes first. And then she also lands a slow first to make your life a lot easier. And then the Joltan goes to start the rotation now. He lands a defense break. Yaku goes with hot dots and max damage. And then Rauk cycles for even more damage. 
And then the vert obviously goes last to give your turn under team attack bar. And then if you have your fast swing here, you do more dots and you trigger the boss. And then he goes and the dots kill him. So that's why this team, I mean, can't trust this number here, but because I paused the manual. But I would definitely say this team is roughly on the one minute and 10. I want to say it's 99%. And the reason why I say it's 99 is because earlier today I was streaming and I was saying it's 100% because I've yet to fail. And then I failed on stream. So I felt once on stream. And I think the reason why is because I literally missed every defense break possible. So maybe there's a, um, maybe I should put the Yaku after my Rauk and that might fix it. Or I think it's also just pure bad luck because Joel 10 missed defense break and the Rauk missed defense break. You just land no dots. So I think it's a little bit um, RNG, but definitely less so compared to some of the other teams. And I found it to be very, very consistent here. And the Jolten needs the will because he needs to be in a very specific turn order for your defense break to, to land. And there's no replacement for Jolten. Like there is no replacement. He, and you have to second awaken him. You second awaken him because he gives dots um, when he attacks. And you must use Jolten because this dungeon is light. And a dark monster will tank the boss easily, but also Joltan is skill one, gives defense break. Also is skill two, or is that his passive? I don't remember, but he gives defense break, and that's really, really crucial for consistent runs. Anyways, guys, I highly suggest you guys start running these teams if you're more on the mid-game player side with lesser rune quality. You don't need great runes. I forgot to show you them here, but this is the Rage Blade Verd. If you can have if you run a Attack, create, attack, bird, really good for this. Doesn't need to be crit damage, but crit rate slot four, 100, 100 crit rate, must have. This one can be on will anything. I like the shield because it gives your team a little more tankiness because there's no healer in here. So it definitely suggest will and two shield if possible, if not one shield. And then we have the route that you saw earlier, Bond Blade, the Yen. This is the Yen that I still use from my Giants team. I just moved it over. So for you guys, you don't need this, this high of stat, but you definitely want the accuracy at a 24 mark to give it um, the minimum requirement for the mid boss, or for the, the last boss, and 39 for the mid boss. And Yaku, 35 is the stats. This is the stats I noticed, at like this kind of tankiness around this range made it that it's really safe. Anything less than that, I found that it, my, my units just kept on dying when the boss takes a turn. So you definitely want to sacrifice some damage for some tankiness, for some survivability, if that's some trouble you have surviving or failing. That's the reason why you're failing. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next video.